Uh, what's going on, Herd? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about, uh, well, a big theory that's been really, it's been a frequent in the comment section, let's just put it that way. It doesn't have anything directly to do with, well, it does. It does have something directly to do with the Hellfire, but the Hellfire is not alone. Okay, so we're going to test it on the Hellfire. We're going to test it on a couple other vehicles. I hope I, man, I should have thought this out a little bit more. What are my other vehicles going to be? I got a couple ideas. We got a couple ideas. We'll figure it out. Long story short, as a lot of you guys know out there, uh, these new vehicles they don't stance they don't drop they're you know, just plain and simple there's a theory out there that well there's a couple of theories and we're going to test two of them that i've been seeing repeating pretty frequently but there's a couple of theories out there that just because it's not dropping doesn't mean it's not stancing and there's some people that are going as far as saying yeah you can clearly see a difference once you do shoot the rounds into it and some people are also saying well it will drop slightly if you just kick the fenders. After we test that, if that's false or true, we will then also just kick the fenders in and see if it, it made any difference at all, okay? So that's the premise of today's video. We're gonna be trying to test something. Again, this is gonna be an opinionated-based video, just plain and simple, because I know some people have such a broad spectrum of ideas and beliefs in this game that, like I said, this is gonna be opinionated, but we're gonna hop right into it. All right, so I'm just trying to get the feel here of the vehicle without any type of messing with the uh, stance. So the only reason I'm really testing this and giving it a benefit of the doubt is because A, I haven't really put a ton of time into it personally of testing this, and B, I could still see how damaging the suspension could play a factor on the car. So that's all we're really doing here is trying to see if we can see if one way or another is, is clear cut. I got a pretty good feel of it here. So what I'm gonna do right off the bat is I'm gonna stance it up. Now, because we are on this odd track, we are gonna have to stance it up uh, through the chassis. Let's see if the front end will stance up traditionally. Well, see if we can put a full magazine in. That's really all I'm testing here. Of course, it's not gonna drop. It's just not gonna drop, I get that. The issue is, on the contrary, is if you put bulletproof tires on a vehicle that does stance, it won't drop, it won't stance, and just because you shoot the wheels doesn't mean it handles any different. So that's really the other side of the argument here for people that aren't believing this. I'm kind of going to say at the beginning of this video here, I, I, I don't see that this is going to make any difference, but I see how it could. So, if you're saying, hey, you didn't shoot the wheel, you didn't shoot the suspension, I did. Well, that's a chassis shot, and you're going to have to do a chassis shot on a custom. We'll test it in free mode for those of you that are hating on it, but this should have done the job just the same. Also, we will kick the fenders in, and that should show us the difference as well, if we really have a difference. All right, let's get her in. I must say, I'm not noticing any difference right off the bat here. I'm gonna give it much more testing time than this, though. I got a pretty good feel of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna respawn the vehicle. This is gonna bring us back to stock. I'm gonna see if I can't feel any difference here. Does it seem less? 
less body roll, honestly. like there is a difference after all I'm not saying it's huge on the driftability like I'm not saying anything like that what I'm saying is I notice a difference on the body roll on the body momentum when I'm going into some of these like uh, heavier fluttering corners when it was stanced up or when it was damaged I should say uh, it seems like you could see a lot more side to side of the body uh, by watching the roof and here it's very planted it's not yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really move around at all. all right, I, I gotta test it one more time. We gotta go back to the stance again here. Oh, Jesus! Looked over at the Elgato, crashed her into the wall. Don't text and drive. All right, so pretty planted, pretty planted. Now, this is also how you stance vehicles on tracks like this that will blow up otherwise because these uh, because these tracks are not on the actual surface, the actual map that GTA or Rockstar, rather, have designed for us to be on. These are on the props, and technically right now we're floating over the damn ocean. Uh, yeah, it's very temperamental on this stancing thing. So the front can usually be stanced up normally by shooting there, but if it can't and it smokes the engine block, then um, just shoot it right back here. And that's where you're shooting the rears too, just right behind the wheel well. Yeah, it gives you a little bumper damage. Yeah, it makes the bumper floppy on the rapid, but all in all, guess what? It's the only way you can really make it happen without sitting there and kicking your damn fenders. So again, I want to test this out. See what I mean, guys? There's a lot more body roll. Man, it's hard to get on camera, but I, I can see it. Right there, you see that? How we can get the body rolling like that? How it bounces side to side. Let me see if I can't, uh, I know I'm going side to side and I'm making the body do that, but let me, uh, let me respawn this real quick. Let me see if it does that normally. So it kind of still does. So yeah, it kind of still does. I know I'm only focusing on one small aspect and it's not drift related, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if there's any focal point where I can actually point a finger and say, okay, this does make a difference. Maybe we need to look into it a little bit more here, guys. That could be enough, although it's just very minuscule, that might be enough. As hard as I'm looking to see if there is something I can prove it right on, there's nothing I can really prove it wrong on either. All right, technically stanced up again, although no drop on the body. Oh yeah, there's way more body roll. Okay, there is more body roll, guys. There is more body roll. I can see it. The more I spend going back and forth, the more I'm seeing it. The longer within the speed boost. Well, that's not even that I'm in the speed boost. You don't have to be. You notice it more in the single gear, and you notice it when you're fluttering back and forth. The car is much more planted once it starts getting out of the... Uh, you can just see the car shaking, plain and simple. So now to focus a little bit more on whether does it does it affect the drift at all? God, why 
Why am I hopping bandwagons right now? I don't know. I don't want to say that the speed boost is more efficient like this, but I feel like it links up a little bit longer. There is more body roll, which kind of trips me out a little bit visually, but... guys there is definitely a difference now i don't know how much this difference is going to really affect us in the drift and in all honesty i'm not going to go just spend an hour an hour and a half or two hours to make one video to do this i, I don't i want to hop into other cars and test them but i really feel like it took me it took me about 45 minutes the more and more i got to drifting the more and more i realized i was linking some lines with the uh, once the vehicle was uh, damaged up so to speak that i was having a little bit more trouble linking up without it and I do feel like possibly the speed boost could be slightly more uh, forgiving, meaning you can have a little bit more angle or you can be just a, a little bit below or a little bit above your RPMs and still get away with it. Now, again, these are all things I'm not willing to claim in this video. What I am willing to claim is that there is clearly a difference and may only be with this vehicle, but I would hate to go out on that cracked limb and go that far. I figured since we are trying to make beneficial videos, information-based videos, let's dig into some of these things that are kind of stirring up the community a little bit. And I know this video might stir it up even more, but what I'm saying is I clearly see a difference when you do the burnout and when you're taking off and you got that little bit of a body roll. No, 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 no. That little bit of body roll is now any, that's not anywhere comparable to the body roll you get once this thing is damaged up. I will kick the fenders in here, guys, but in all reality, I don't even really feel like this is necessary to do so. For one, I don't do this with my normal, I, I wouldn't do this ever, even if this did make a big difference. Uh, what I'm mainly looking for here, and the reason I am sitting here kicking, is because I'm looking for a drop. I'm looking because people have claimed that doing this will, uh, well, it'll drop your car. I don't know how many times you even need to kick this son of a gun either. <laughs> until the door is damaged is that good my engine block is uh hissing sounds like a damn teapot so honestly i think what people are seeing here isn't a drop i think it's the ridiculous damage in the damn fender that you're putting into it i mean jesus do my best to line it up on that line there on the wall and as you'll see if i can get it perfectly centered that is exactly the same on both sides there is no tilt I kicked the hell out of this car, okay? There is no tilt. The car isn't tilted to the left. So you aren't getting a drop. But long story short, I did clearly see a difference. So I think here, guys, we need to start giving this a little bit more attention. If the only difference is just that little bit of body roll, well, then so be it. But I would hate to think that that is the only bit of difference you're going to see. Now, does this equate to every single vehicle? Uh, hard to say, you know, the, the Komoda, the, some of these other vehicles that have released out that, you know, potentially drift just fine without a stance. Well, what happens when you give them a little bit of extra juice there? What happens if you do damage them up? Now, again, this is one where I am willing to bite the bullet, say that I was not correct in the beginning of the video. And hey, there's been times like that where I haven't been correct or I've overlooked certain things. And I have really overlooked this one for a long time. So to answer the question of the video, does it stance or can you stance these vehicles? Well, no, you can't. Um, it's, it's not lowering the vehicle. It's not changing the offset or the, you know, the spacing or the camber. Of, of, it's not changing that. That's what stancing ultimately is. is it's not just lowering. It's the stance and it's, it's the offset. And yes, the term has been very oddly used in GTA where, yes, it's still accurate. You do lower the vehicle down. You are slamming it. Um, but stancing in general might still be a bit inaccurate. I actually have gotten comments where saying that, just like, oh, you can't speed boost, oh, no, you can't, there's no clutch on GTA, you get kind of like that too. Well, so it's not stancing, it's just slamming your vehicle. You'll always get that one or two people that think they're gonna tell you what to do and how to do it, but is that ever gonna change our ways? No, it's not gonna change it. So answering that question, does it stance? No, it doesn't stance, but does it alter the handling line? 
Yeah, it does. There's more body momentum, and the bo more body momentum is going to give you slightly more inertia or body roll, depending on what you're going to look at and how fast you're going on that. That's going to ultimately affect the drift slightly. Now, as far as it does ex affect the drift, I don't know. I got to test the revving. I want to talk to a few more people that have just as much time and more time than I do in the drifting and uh, see what their opinions are after they get a few hours in on messing with this. Because I know a lot of people were in the same bandwagon I started with on this video where it's not gonna alter it. You cannot stance it. And you know, we're right, you can't stance them, but it is altering the handling line. And if it's and if it's altering the handling line, it's ultimately gonna be altering that drift line too. I appreciate you guys tuning in, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing the videos. If you're sharing the videos, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Not right off the bat, you know, telling me your opinion. I'm talking, go get your Hellfire, go mess around with it, go test the things I talked about. Watch that body roll, that body momentum on the burnout. Go side to side, watch it. Uh, you can see it in the short corners, you can see it in the single gear. Once you get a little bit higher and you're keeping the longer angles, you don't notice it as much, but that's where I feel like you might be noticing that uh, driftability alteration as well. A little bit longer on the drifts, a little bit more slick. Hard to say if that's the truth or not, because I don't have enough experience in it. As always, guys, hope you all stay happy out there. Please stay positive, and we will definitely speak to you next time.